Um, first, how did you become interested in gerontology? Well, it was sort of by accident. I lived in uh, Nassau County and wanted a county job. So I go down to the county employment office and try to match my credentials with available jobs. And one of the jobs that was a fit was activity director in a 900-bed nursing home, yeah. took the test, got the job, and was directly responsible for 80 residents and planned programs for all 900. Okay. What kind of programs? Um, let me start. Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> what kind of programs? Yeah. We did cooking programs. Okay. We did craft programs. We did music programs. Uh, I tried to. Um, we went on trips. Uh, we did. Uh, Banana pudding. Let me tell you about banana pudding. <gasps> if you've ever met Tifa Snow, she does a video with banana pudding. <laughs> well, let me tell you, uh, I did not have that expertise when, when me and my 20 residents made banana pudding. And what they did is ate it item by item. First they ate the cookies, then they ate the pudding, <laughs> then they ate the whipped cream. <laughs> so we never did get it all together in individual servings. And that's the beginning of my learning of how to work with people with dementia and older adults. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's... Well, how would you say you got there then? What was your career tra uh, trajectory? In well, it was <coughs> yeah. sort of like the accidental tourist. We <laughs> worked, uh, worked there. We had a very strong music department, and one of the musicians was Angelo, and he would come to my unit at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we all fell in love with him. And Angelo, luckily for me, fell in love with me. And so we met at work, married. On our wedding day, we went to the home mm -hmm. in with our, retinue, our bridesmaids. Oh, okay. And the, one of the residents played, Here Comes the Bride, in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And I gave out all my flowers. Now, one of the things that was really special is that Angelo had developed a friendship with a young lady with spina bifida. So she was a double amputee. She's in a, long, in a nursing home. She's only 40 years old. So as we're leaving, she said to Angelo, she can be your wife, but I'll be your girlfriend. Oh, that's so, oh, so we lived, worked there and um, really became interested in group activities. I, I think my specialty is enabling a group to work together in a diverse group mm -hmm. because in the nursing home I was on the rehab unit and was able to work with um, a spectrum of people not just dementia but also physically disabled cognitively disabled uh, together as a group and how to make the, how to enable them to enjoy the activity that I'm doing no matter what their disability was so sort of affected that there Angelo decided that he wanted to move, mm -hmm. and so we ended up in North Carolina, Dare County, in 1990, and in May, and Angelo I went out and looked for jobs, and it was really difficult, so mm -hmm. Angelo said, take the summer off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there are no jobs in Dare County in the winter, mm -hmm. so we sort of struggled a little, and luckily I had put in an application in February, I was hired by the Outer Banks Beach Club to provide fun activities. Mm -hmm. So I worked there and then there was an article in the paper that the state of North Carolina was offering startup funding for adult daycares. And I successfully competed for the grant and was one of ten that was funded mm -hmm. to start an adult daycare. And that was our three-year journey to identify a space, to make the space uh, accessible, to comply with all the state regulations to get the state inspector down to work with social services and uh, so we founded the first adult daycare licensed adult daycare in Dare County and we provided that programming for 10 years and uh, then I really realized what I wanted to do with people with dementia mm -hmm. because we started the day with a brunch family style Everyone sat at the table, staff, and we call them participants. Mm -hmm. And after brunch, we would then make salads or puddings or cakes, as again is family style, an hour of exercise, a sit-down family style lunch with staff, 
after that we'd have 30 minutes of a music video or something while we cleaned up the kitchen in, in another room. And then we'd do a craft or we'd uh, play games or we'd have guest speakers. And one of the things that I did <laughs> was very, it worked out, but it was scary. It was like 104 degrees and we had ponies visiting, miniature horses. Mm -hmm. Well, I brought them in because I didn't want the participants to go out in that heat. And all of a sudden they just seemed to explode in size. <laughs> 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 and somehow outside they didn't look quite as big as they did inside but but we survived and uh, the residents really liked it and the ponies were cooperative uh, so that was one of our interesting programs tried to keep it diverse have different we utilized students coming in to play music we had the master gardeners come in to do gardening our cottage was a uh, kitchen. Our program took place in a cottage, okay. and I feel that adult day programs ought to be in a home-like environment, and that's what it was. So we had a screened-in front porch, we had a kitchen, dining, we had a room for exercise, we had a restroom, which we very, a room for residents to rest in, to have quiet time if they needed it, mm -hmm. and an office. And we had a fenced-in backyard, and we had accessible planters, so that, because we would go out in the garden, and my participants would be weeding, and you know, ladies with walkers bending down to pick up the weeds was sort of scary to me. So we provided that program there. I served uh, our, we had about 10 people a day, and it was well, well received in the community. One of the participants in my program said to me, Gail, you help me be who I'm supposed to be. And that's why I continue in the work that I do, because I'm trying to enable people with dementia to feel that they're who they're supposed to be. So that's sort of how I ended up here. <laughs> so at what point in your career did you embrace the term gerontologist? Okay, that's sort of late in life, sort of when I met the SGA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And got to come to conferences and meet other gerontologists, so. Uh, so how long ago was that? About five years. Okay. Did you, um, were you aware of that term before then? Oh, yes. Uh, the gerontologist is something we dearly want in Dare County. <laughs> <laughs> the functional aspect, we wanted a geront a, an MD that was a gerontologist. We wanted more, you know, we wanted that position, that role, that identity in Dare County. Mm. So that, you know, I want you to help me here. So, you know, having a gerontologist would be a very valuable asset in our community. Okay. Um, do you, did you have female mentors that impacted your move into gerontology? And can you describe them, who they were, how they impacted you? Uh, Tipa Snow is an occupational therapist, and I met her early on. I actually facilitated a conference in Dare County, the first mm -hmm. Alzheimer's conference in Dare County. Mm -hmm. And Tifa came, and I met Tifa, and I was just blown away. And she has mentored me uh, through my career, and I just love the way she can take very complex neurological issues and translate them into something that lay people can understand mm -hmm. and repeat. Can you think of like a particular situation, um, even a particular participant, where that occurred? Um, Well, I don't quite know how to answer that one, mm -hmm. but uh, Tipa, when she presented, was talking, and as she's talking, she's going around the room and collecting pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite Tipa story is we were in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we, we were trying to, the Alzheimer's Association was trying to pull in politicians to support Alzheimer's. And Tipa was there, and they got two very reluctant senators up on stage, and Tipa went into her dementia role. Uh -huh. And she said to one of the senators that she wanted his watch. And he refused to give her his watch. And Tipa went very deep into the role of dementia and actually cussed him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, I was like, go Tipa. I don't know whether it was effective. But it certainly did get the point across that working with people with dementia can be difficult. So. That's a great example. 
Um, anything else you want to share about how unique um, she was as a female gerontologist? Um, TIPA has taken a very difficult topic, translated into something where people will come to hear her, and that's amazing. Because usually people hear dementia and they go in the other direction. I mean, fast. <laughs> right. So I would think that, would, and she's risen from North Carolina, uh, renowned to national. And it's still the same old TIPA. She's still loving what she does and so passionate about what she does. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So how has being a gerontologist interacted with your own personal aging process? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, going to conferences and being aware of the uh, obstacles or difficulties in aging. I look at my house now mm -hmm. and do I need an elevator? Do I need to widen this door? Uh, very aware of uh, transportation issues. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do if I can't drive? Things like that. So it's really helped me be more aware of aging and then on the other hand, uh, trying to dramatically improve dementia capable, the capability of communities to engage people with dementia. Mm -hmm. Because I don't see people, I don't see a vision for people with dementia in this wonderful assisted living where everything's taken care of for them. I see them living in the community in a dementia capable community where they can go to the store and if they make a mistake someone will be there to gently help them through. Like one of my participants went to the store with her daughter and saw only free. So she grabbed her box of free strawberries and the daughter had to sort of explain that you had to buy one to get one free. Mm -hmm. So there, there can be, if, since the daughter was aware, we were able to navigate that situation without embarrassing the person with dementia. Mm -hmm. How do you see that in your own community? Uh, as being dementia capable? Mm -hmm. <laughs> An up, uphill road. But what I do with my program called Art at the Park is I try to um, take people out into the parks and the art in the park is for the caregiver, family or professional, for community volunteers, for the person with memory loss and for the park staff. And we try, we plan the day. I collaborate with the staff on a craft and accessibility for the person with dementia. What will work well with them, what might not. Uh, we provide live music and a uh, snack. And it's very exciting to see the park staff be interested and engaged and wanting to do it. Because usually when you mention dementia, as I say before, people flee. So the park staff is actually engaged and excited and appreciate the training. The, volu the community volunteers, I'm hoping to get people while they're still not directly affected by the disease and put in a little education and then hopefully when the, if, if and when the disease hits their family member, they're aware that there's better ways of treating people than just drugs. Mm -hmm. so. That's excellent. Right. Um, the Wiggle Project focuses on legacies of, of older women gerontologists. Within that framework, is there anything else you'd like to share or would like us to know? Um, I guess first of all, I'm 68 years old and I came to realize at this conference that I'm looked at by some of the students as old and not valuable, okay? And I think that our youngins need to understand that there is some value in older women and older, older gerontologists and not to just think because they're old, they're not valuable. And I've really seen that, you know, it's like I'm, I feel I have something to say and not been well received. Mm -hmm. Edit. <laughs> how, how would you like to see that come Ch out? That's a good question and I welcome any insight mm -hmm. as, as to how to do it. Because I was that 20 year old, knew it all myself too. Mm -hmm. But I think that, that hopefully this program will enable the younger folks coming up to recognize that older folks do have some value. Yeah. <laughs> so. Is there anything else you'd like to share about uh, um, your trajectory, how you started from point A, when you think about those young people, 
to where you are now? Is there something else you would want to share with? Well, I think the neat thing is right now, um, I've really enjoyed the relationships I've made and the people I've met uh, through the gerontology profession. And I guess what I'd like to share now is that at least we're looking at it. We've got to protect those programs because I know some schools are trying to close them down. And very grateful that young people are going into this profession because that with them, they bring their um, fresh ideas and enthusiasm.